The perfect cold wallet doesn't exist, but if it did, what would it look like? Would it be affordable? And could someone who is new to crypto pick it up and use it with ease? So in this video, I'm going to share all the details of what my perfect cold wallet would look like from its design to its security and user friendliness. And then later I'll stack it up against some of the current wallets on the market and see how it compares to my cold wallet. And if you're lucky, I'll share some of my sketches of my perfect cold wallet that I drew later in the video as well. Okay, so what does my perfect cold wallet look like? Like literally, what would it look like if I designed it myself? Well, I really like the look of the Ellie Pal Titan 2.0, for example, because it's the closest thing on the market that resembles a smartphone, which makes navigating the device easy. But I also really like the simplicity of the Tangem wallet. I mean, it's just a card. So there's nothing fancy about it, but I just like how simple this design is. But neither of these wallets look perfect to me at least. Elipal is too big and while Tangem is a great size, it doesn't have a screen. So you could say my wallet would fall somewhere right in the middle. It would be the same size as a Tangem wallet, except it would have buttons and it would have a screen. It wouldn't have a touch screen, mainly because buttons last longer than touch screens and touch screens are more prone to cracking. So I would definitely go with the button option. As far as the actual screen itself, I'd want it to be an IPS or in-plane switching screen, which offers the best quality in different environments like direct sunlight, low sunlight, or whatever it may be. All right, so far my perfect cold wallet is the size of a card. It has a screen and some buttons, but what else? Well, I would like the exterior of the wallet to be made out of aerospace titanium alloy, which is the same kind of material that the new iPhones are made out of. Apparently this is the same type of alloy that's used on spacecrafts as it does have the best strength to weight ratio. That said, it is more expensive compared to something like aluminum alloy, which is 10 times less expensive than titanium. But I think the added durability and just coolness factor alone would be worth using titanium alloy alloy. Also like iPhones, I would like my wallet to come in different colorways such as Bitcoin orange, uh, natural titanium, or maybe even gold for example. One thing I really want for my perfect cold wallet is for it to be manufactured in the USA, mainly because that's where I live, but also because to my knowledge there are practically no hardware wallets that are manufactured here in the USA. I'd also like my wallet to have enough buttons so that it's easy to enter your passphrase or your pin or whatever it may be but this might be kind of difficult considering how small I want the wallet to be. Again, I want it to be as small as like a bank card. So maybe something like a scroll wheel that would allow you to quickly scroll through different digits would be easier than using just a couple of buttons. I'm really dating myself here, but if you remember the old iPod Nanos, like this one right here, it has this scroll wheel and then it has like a center enter button. It has some left and right buttons has a menu button, and then I would also put like a backspace button for my wallet. I think this would be a pretty cool design for a hardware wallet. Also, my perfect cold wallet would have no battery because a battery is kind of pointless in a hardware wallet. The only time you're using your wallet is when you are actually interacting with it, doing transactions and things like that. So there's no real need for a battery because you're always connecting it to a device, either your computer or phone. So it would just have a USB-C port that you could plug in your computer or a power source to power it on. And then that's just one less thing to potentially fail in the future. And I would also want my wallet to be IP68 rated so that it would be water resistant and dust proof, making it even more durable. And speaking of resistance, what security features would my perfect cold wallet have? Well, I'm glad you asked. I've made plenty of videos talking about all the different security features that every hardware wallet should have. And while some are crucial, some features are just plain overkill and can actually overcomplicate the wallet. So this is what I'd have in my perfect cold wallet. First and foremost, my wallet would be a BIP39 wallet, which simply means it utilizes mnemonic phrase or a seed phrase. So you'd be able to set up your seed phrase using a 12 or 24 word phrase, whatever you want. There would also be an option to set up Shamir Backup, which just gives you multiple phrases that you can then take and split into different locations for added security. And you would be able to manage multiple seed phrases using a single device. So imagine having five seed phrases on your one hardware wallet. And to complement the seed phrase, I would also want my wallet to feature the hidden wallet or passphrase option, which allows you to add an extra word or phrase to the end of your 12 or 24 word seed phrase again for added security. And to prevent unauthorized access to the device, you'd be able to set a five to 60 digit pin along with a password. 
the pin code would be required while the passphrase would be optional. You would also have the ability to enable or disable password entry requirements for confirming transactions. Also, my wallet would utilize an EAL 6 Plus secure element chip, which protects your private key and prevents malware or brute force attacks from being able to extract your private key. These chips are used in most hardware wallets, and they're also found in our bank cards and electronic passports for similar security reasons. The main problem with most wallets that use a secure element chip is they can't fully open source their firmware, which is a huge issue in the crypto space because open sourcing your firmware means that you have nothing to hide and allows the community to audit the code if that's something that they wanna do. So if you didn't already guess, my perfect cold wallet would be completely open source. But even though it's completely open source, I would still want a third party security firm to audit the firmware to prove that there are no vulnerabilities or backdoors, and then they would make this audit public so that everyone could view it. Also, firmware updates would be as easy as plugging your wallet into your computer, going to the manufacturer's website, and hitting update firmware. And since I know a lot of you only want to store Bitcoin on your hardware wallet, there would be a Bitcoin only firmware version as well. And to ensure that only authentic firmware could be installed and used on my hardware wallet, it would use a secure boot process, which is initialized when you turn the hardware wallet on. This process ensures that only signed and authenticated firmware can be loaded onto your device to protect it from downloading a malicious or fake firmware, for example. Also, my wallet would have an anti-tamper self-destruct feature. So after a set number of failed attempts trying to access a device, it would do a factory reset on the wallet, completely eliminating your wallet from the device. Of course, you could still recover your crypto by importing your seed phrase. And lastly, everything that you do from confirming transactions to entering your seed phrase when you import it would all be displayed on the device only, not on any internet connected device. That way it remains completely secure and offline. And that's about it for security. Simple, but effective. I think that would be my cold wallet motto. Now, one of the most important things to consider when choosing a hardware wallet, or in this case, when creating your own perfect hardware wallet, is user friendliness. Oftentimes, what sets a great hardware wallet apart from a mediocre hardware wallet is user friendliness. That's why I'd want my cold wallet to be as user friendly as possible. So to start, it would be compatible on both mobile and desktop devices across the board. So Windows, uh, Mac, Linux, iOS, and Android devices, the wallet would be compatible with all of those. And the app itself would be 100% open source. During the setup process, the app would hold your hand. It would walk you through every single step. So that way, even if you're a complete beginner, you would know exactly how to set up your hardware wallet and you would feel comfortable doing so. And it would provide clear and concise definitions of any features that you wanna know about during setup, such as Shamir backup, or maybe the passphrase feature. You could just click on it or hover over it and it would clearly and concisely explain to you exactly what that feature is for. In fact, I would just have an entire video series on the manufacturer's website that shows you how to set up and use your wallet. That way there are no questions or mistakes made during the setup process. Once your wallet is connected to the app, you would be able to view profit and loss for your tokens, as well as live market updates. You would also be able to buy, sell, swap, and bridge tokens directly in the app using your hardware wallet. Now, something I know a lot of you like is the ability to create multiple public addresses. For example, when you set up your hardware wallet, you get one address, so you get one Ethereum address. Well, some wallets let you set up multiple public addresses. That way you can separate these addresses. Maybe you use them for different things or you just want to increase your privacy. So my hardware wallet would definitely allow you to create multiple public addresses. Now, as far as coin support goes, I would not mess around. Now, I know this is easier said than done, but my hardware wallet, my perfect hardware wallet, would support every single blockchain and as many tokens as possible. Plus you'd be able to stake directly in the app using your hardware wallet without having to connect to a third party hot wallet. So how much would this baby cost? Well, I would like it if it was under $150. I think that's pretty fair. Preferably it would be under $100. I feel like wallets that are under the $100 mark are a no brainer because you're literally investing in something to secure your investments. And for under $100, I think that's a, uh, a pretty good investment. That said, even though it would increase manufacturing costs, I would not cut out my titanium alloy design because really I just want a hardware wallet made from that material. I think it's really cool. It's lightweight, it's durable, 
and I wouldn't sacrifice it. Okay, now before I show you some sketches of my perfect hardware wallet, I wanna show you some real world hardware wallets that are available right now that are pretty close to my perfect version of a hardware wallet. That said, the thing that I found is that there are actually plenty of really good cold wallets on the market. However, they always seem to lack just one or two features that are on my perfect cold wallet list or they just have too many features and they have to go and overcomplicate everything. Well, if you're subscribed to my channel, you probably already know that Tangem is one of my favorite cold wallets. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, well, then you're just missing a bunch of videos like this one, so definitely subscribe. Now, the reason I like Tangem so much and why I recommend this wallet so often is because it's literally the most user-friendly crypto wallet on the market. And that shouldn't go unnoticed because one of the greatest barriers to using a cold wallet is often how complicated cold wallets can be. But Tangem has taken that barrier and just completely plowed through it. They've created a wallet that's not only easy to set up, but it's also easy to use on a daily basis if that's something you wanna do, even if you're a complete beginner. And it does all this while still being pretty dang secure. It has an EAL6 plus secure element chip. It also lets you set up an access code to prevent others from gaining access to your wallet. And it's IP68 rated, so it is super durable. It doesn't have a battery in it and it really doesn't have anything in it that's prone to failure. But there are also some things that Tangem lacks, such as a screen. Because it communicates with your phone using NFC, it doesn't need a screen. It also doesn't let you set up a passphrase or hidden wallet, and its firmware is not open source, just the Tangem app is. But despite its shortcomings, Tangem has sold more than 1 million wallets and not a single one has been hacked, but that doesn't mean that there isn't room for improvement. And the price is right, it's just about $50, $60, even cheaper if you use my discount code in the description of this video. So it's a great wallet for, well, really for anyone. Next is the Trezor Safe 3. This is another hardware wallet that competes with my version of a perfect cold wallet. It is an entry level wallet, so it's pretty simple to set up and use. Not as simple as Tangem, but still a great wallet if you're a beginner or even a crypto expert. And unlike Tangem, it does have its own screen and a couple buttons. So everything you do, such as confirming transactions and entering your seed phrase or pin code is all done on the device, which I like because I'd rather enter all my sensitive information on the physical device versus on an internet connected device because it's more secure that way. Plus it has most of the security features that I want in my perfect cold wallet. It has a secure element chip, a device specific pin, a hidden wallet option, Shamir backup, and is 100% open source. Now the main downside to the Trezor Safe 3 is that it is mainly a desktop only wallet. The screen and the buttons are pretty small and the buttons make it a pain to enter anything on the wallet because you only have two buttons to navigate through the entire alphabet and a bunch of different numbers and symbols and the coin support could be better. But other than that, the Safe 3 is a really solid hardware wallet and for $79, it's hard to beat. Now this last wallet that I'll compare to my version of the perfect cold wallet is the One Key Classic. Now this is another bare bones entry level hardware wallet. Super simple to set up, really easy to use to manage all of your crypto. And you know me, I'm a simple guy. So while this thing isn't the prettiest to look at, I actually really like its simplistic design. It's thin, it's lightweight, the screen could be a little better. It's kind of like the OG Game Boy, you know, the one with the black and white screen. That's exactly what this looks like when you turn it on. But uh, other than that, it gets the job done. But don't let the looks of this wallet fool you. It is packed full of a ton of security features. Uh, most of the same features that the Trezor Safe 3 has. So it does have a secure element chip. You can set up a device specific pin. It has the hidden wallet or passphrase option and it's 100% open source. Plus you can verify that the firmware is authentic on demand using the OneKey app. The main difference with OneKey is that it's crypto management app. The OneKey app is available on both desktop and mobile devices. So unlike Trezor, which is a desktop only wallet or Tangem, which is a mobile only wallet, you can use a OneKey Classic with either your phone or your desktop computer. If you use it with your phone, you just enable the Bluetooth on it and then you can communicate that way. Otherwise, you can just connect it to your computer using the included USB-C cable. And it still comes in under $100, only $89. Plus you can save a few extra bucks if you use my discount code in the description of this video. All that said, these three wallets are great. I use them all myself. I use Tangem almost every day, and then I use my Trezor and OneKey wallet less frequently, mainly because I store um, you know, a larger amount of my crypto portfolio using these wallets. However, my version or my sketch of the perfect cold wallet 
looks a little different than these wallets, so um, let me show you. Now, before I show you, I just want to let you know I'm not an artist. Uh, when I was sketching these wallets, I really just wanted to make something that was as simple as possible, you know, a really simple look. Of course, it would look a lot better with that titanium alloy, but my sketch is actual, like the actual size of the wallet would be. So without further ado, here is my first sketch of the perfect cold wallet. Let me know what you think. Would you rock that? Or uh, would you throw it in the trash? I think it looks pretty sweet. Now, what I like about this design is it's actually a small wallet. I know it looks kind of big on paper, but it's literally, it's, it's the same size of a card. It would be the same size as a card if I were to say manufacture it, but it has the large screen so that you can view everything you're doing on your wallet. And then it has like a power button, some up and down buttons for navigating through the device and then a confirmation button. So it wouldn't be like super easy to navigate through all the different letters and numbers when you're entering your passphrase or whatever. But I think overall with the large screen, it would be very user friendly. Now this next sketch I might get in trouble for just because of how similar it looks to this iPod Nano, but it would be, it would be slightly different because it's a crypto wallet. But this is sketch number two right there, if you can see that. So it still has a nice size screen. Again, golden titanium alloy, gotta love it. And then it has this scroll wheel that would be good for navigating through all the different numbers and letters. It has a menu button, a backspace button. I think every hardware wallet should have a backspace button. And then some arrows for navigating, um, you know, through transaction details and things like that. But I'll let you be the judge. Which hardware wallet would you rather have? Maybe you wouldn't have either. But if you had to choose one, would you go with wallet number one? Or would you go with number two? Let me know in the comments. All that said, even if you get your hands on the perfect cold wallet or the next best thing, like one of these three wallets I showed you, it doesn't matter because it doesn't mean that you're completely immune to hacks and scams. If you don't know how to use it correctly, which I show you exactly how to do in this next video. So definitely check that out. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you in the next one.